Hello and welcome to this video in the lockdown learning series where we're going to take a look at WaveLab. So all the videos up to this point have been using Cubase but now we're going to look at WaveLab and see some of the things you can do in there which some of them do cross over a bit with Cubase if you wanted to make life a little more difficult for yourself but there's a lot of things you can do in WaveLab which just make life easier and simpler as you're going to see but it does mean learning a new program so we're going to take a bit of time to look at how it's different to Cubase. So going to launch WaveLab Elements, get the obligatory warning about how it's going to run out because it's on the stay home trial for two months. And I'm just going to create an empty window. So this is the window that comes up when you start WaveLab. So we're just going to look at an empty window. I find it a little bit busy. There's quite a lot that's going on in this and some of the things are a little bit, maybe a little bit unfriendly, but we've got a file browser here, a spectroscope, which you're going to see in action. Your audio file is going to end up down here and then the master section. So today all we're going to look at is opening up a file, doing a bit of basic audio editing, stroke manipulation, and then saving the file. So opening a file, there's two ways you can do it. You can browse through here. So for instance, here we're in my music folder on my computer. So this is already there and there's the file we're going to be opening. Or you can go to file and open. And then you get it in this browsing dialog box here, whichever suits you really. So you get things such as recent files, etc. in here. I'm just going to open this file up, double click it. And there you can see it now is in the bottom section of the window. So here we see the file. I'm just going to play it. You may recognize it if you've uh, stuck around till the end of any of my videos. So this is about seven minutes long. So this is the full version of the song. And we're going to just look at some of the basic editing you can do to, to trim this down. So this has got a sort of preamble section at the beginning etc and then the bit that I've actually used for intro so we're just going to cut this down so you can click and drag to select any part of a file and we're going to first thing we're going to do is get rid of this beginning of this file we're going to look at fading in and fading out as well and adjusting levels and so on so first things first let's get rid of the beginning of this so you can zoom in and out using the keys which are the same as on Cubase so that's G and H to zoom in and out so I'm going to click near the beginning because it zooms around there. And now we can see that a little bit more accurately. So I'm going to get rid of this part by clicking here and then just drag into the left. You can select one channel or the other if you go over the center, but we want to just select both. And then I'm going to delete this. Now on a MacBook, you can't do this with a keyboard shortcut. You've got a right click, sorry, two finger tap and then pick delete because the key that you want is not on a standard Mac keyboard, but I've got a external keyboard set up, so I'm just going to hit the key. So this is delete on the PC. And then going to zoom in a bit more. Now I actually want this to start here, but I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap. So I'm just going to do that same process again and delete that bit. Zoom in some more, and now you can see we're getting really close. And what I want to do is put a little fade in on here. So Although we can't see anything and we can use this wheel here, this is the wave zoom. So we can see if we really zoom in, there's a tiny little bit of noise beforehand, which I want to get rid of. And it's always good practice just to do a little fade in, even if it's not a fade in you would think of as in a fade in over a long period. You just want to do this because it means you don't get any clicks. Just get into the habit of doing it automatically, particularly because here it's really easy. What you have to do is click and then drag to the left so this is this little area which is under a, well about a tenth of a second and then fade in so you can either do fade in or you can see the shortcut so it's alt i for fade in and that's done that fade in so now if we zoom on the wave there you can see although there is still that noise there at a tiny level it starts from nothing so we're not going to get any clicks because it happens over such a short period it really won't matter if you wanted to be really pernickety you could delete a bit more but some players like VLC at the moment misses out the first fraction of a second of any file so if you've done it really tight you won't hear the beginning so we're now going to fade out at the end once we've trimmed the bits off we don't want so again zooming out with G and I want to get rid of all of this up to this point here so I'm going to do a rough one first 
just to get roughly where I want to be. So again, hit delete on the keyboard. Zoom in, get it a bit closer this time. Again, hit delete on the keyboard. So I tend to do it in a progressive way because it means I don't have to go back and I'm going to get rid of it to about there. So again, that's going to be gone. And this time we're going to do a long fade out like the fade out you would have on a typical track. So sometimes you want to do these on a musical point. I'm not going to listen to this to find that. I'm just going to say we want it about 1 minute 40. In fact, I am. I'm going to find the point where it comes around again. So it starts here. So the chord progression starts here. And I'm just going to fade out from there. So again, highlight the area you want. And you can either click fade out. And in fact, you can click on here and pick what kind of fade out you want. Or I'm just going to do Alt-O for fade out. And there we go. So that's now faded out. And you'll hear that. So we've got a nice smooth fade out there. Now, typically, I think you want to add a little bit of silence after that. So handily, there's a silence generator. So you can get to the end of your file. You can either play through it or you can press this button to take you to the end. And once you're at the end, you can do, on the Mac, it's Command Backspace. It's Control Backspace on the PC. And that brings up this window here, which is the silence generator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in one second of silence. So I'm just going to click on that. One millisecond over isn't the end of the world. It says insert cursor. Click that. And now we've just got a little bit of silence after the file, which is a good thing to put in in the end. So don't put a massive amount in there, but just a second of silence means that you won't necessarily get cut off and it makes it easier to deal with. But don't put huge bits of silence on the end as well, unless you want big pregnant pauses, etc. But for things that go on CDs, you actually put the silences as pauses rather than silences in the track. So that's a quick overview of the basics of editing you can do with selection, deletion, fading, adding silences, etc. Last thing to do is to save your file. There's a number of ways you can do that. You can either go to file and save or save as. Okay, so I'm going to do save as because I don't want to overwrite the original. If you want to overwrite the original, you just hit save, but I'm going to do save as or you can do it in this file here. It's it's a bit strange having the two different ways available. So this for me is one of the slightly more confusing elements of uh, WaveLab elements, no pun intended there, sorry. And that's the format. If you don't want to change it, it's fine. But if you want to use it for, let's say saving this as an MP3, which we'll do as an example, the factory presets, yes, that's a little factory, I'm sure Tentacruel would approve that that's a better factory than the Dorico one. We've got these different WAV formats and also some encoded ones. So you've got AAC, MP3, and FLAC, and OG. So typically, you often want to save them as MP3, but they're not necessarily the highest. So 192K is, is okay, and a lot of commercial ones are that, but you may want to save it at a higher bitrate. So if you just want to use these presets, this is fine and you can just pick that. So let's save it as a 192K MP3. You can see it's changed the extension here. So Oxygen Mix 2 MP3, and then we're just going to click Save Copy, and then it will save that. And we're done. So it doesn't set any of the tags at this point, although we can see how to do that in a later video, but that saved that as an MP3. But if we wanted to save it as a different type of mp3 you have to click here and then you click edit and then you pick what you want so in my case i want to change this to a 320k mp3 the rest of this i'm fine with but again i then have to change another preset here so i'm going to click edit there and then change this to 320 okay so this is a little bit long-winded but it's the kind of thing people often ask because they're worried about mp3 quality because everyone said that mp3s are the end of the world etc and then we need to change the name of this here so i'm going to change this to by doing save as i'm going to call it just 320k so change that to 320k there save that as a preset then okay and then finally we can actually save our file but that will that will then appear 
there's a preset here not under factory presets but these others but that's slightly i've always found that i know i know why they do it but it's it's a bit sort of long-winded and slightly unfriendly so just going to save that as that 320k one overwriting that previous one and it says do you want to replace and keep the old one or do you want to just replace it so i'm going to replace it there we go but notice that this is still the high quality file so it, it will leave the the high quality full resolution data in the editor so even if you save something as an mp3 it doesn't use that as its basis so that's a quick introduction to using wavelab elements in the next video we're going to look at some more processing that you can do i hope you found that useful and we'll see you again soon